Hello, everybody. My name is Su Lian Ling. It is a great honor for me to be here today to present elaboration likelihood theory. My presentation will be five parts. Firstly, I'm going to give you a brief introduction of the history and the definition of the theory. Then I'm going to talk to you about the elaboration likelihood model, followed by the disciplines that utilize the theory and examples. I'm going to show critiques of the theory. Finally, I will discuss applications of the elaboration likelihood theory application in agriculture communications. The elaboration likelihood theory was developed by Richard P. T. and John Capshaw Oppel in the mid 1970s. They presented this new theory, elaboration likelihood model, known as ELM. But the ELM is based on postulate proposed by Liam Festinger in 1954, which states that people are motivated to hold correct attitudes. These attitudes help people make sense of themselves and the world, allowing them to respond to changing events. P Patty and Kapsch Opel summarized many empirical studies testing its various propositions. This theory incorporates some aspect of cognitive response theory but goes considerably beyond it. They argue that mass ma communication situations can be conceptualized as evoking one of two routes to attitude change, the central route and the peripheral route. The central route involves persuasion through what they call message elaboration, basically scrutinizing the content of the argument and then changing one's attitude on the basis of the merits of the argument. The peripheral route involves attitude change based on cues Irrelevant to argument quality, message elaboration is most likely when people are both able and motivated to process the argument. People are best able to process complex arguments when they are well informed, have a schematic understanding of the issue, or um, distracted, and when repetition sufficiently familiarized when then with the argument they are motivated to do so when the issue is personally relevant they are forewarned of the persuasion attempt and or have a pre dispositional need for cognitive activity under such conditions according to the Theory quality of argument is the key determinant of attitude change. Otherwise, persuasion, persuasive impact should be determined by cues peripheral to the argument, such as the attractiveness or expertise of the source, the target's mood, present music, uh, re re rhetorical symbols, and the sheer number of volume rather than quality of arguments. The quality of arguments dictates attitude change under conditions producing high elaboration likelihood. Why are more peripheral cues doing so under conditions producing low elaboration likelihood? So, the model of persuasion is a dual process theory describing how attitudes form and change. This model provides a framework to Exams the individual variables need for recognition and issue involvement in a situational variables argue quality and a message frame that may influence the persuasion process through either the central or peripheral route. Here, the elaboration mess, um, means degree to which an individual cognitive process issues relevant argument within a persuasive communication. And persuasion in any instance in which an active attempt is made to change a person's mind. Let's talk about the two routes further. The central route to persuasion is marked by high elaboration. Elaboration is defined as the factor that relates information in a persuasive message to knowledge already possessed in order to arrive at new ideas that were not already present in the advertisement or stored in previous knowledge. 
the ultimate goal of elaboration is to judge whether the position taken in the persuasion message has any real merit. The thoughts and responses that a person has in response to a message are called cognitive responses. In generating cognitive responses, a person is able to analyze the merit of the position taken. In order to evaluate a message, a person must be motivated and able. If they have both the motivation and the ability, a person can carefully appraise the message's merit. It is important to know that appraisal varies from person to person and situation to situation. The peripheral route to persuasion is determined by the reliance on simple clues and environmental characteristics of the message to make decisions and judgments. For example, in the peripheral route, people rely on clues such as source attractiveness. Perceived credibility of the source and a message length. Here, if either motivation or ability is not available to a person, there is a heavy reliance on peripheral clues as opposed to a message's factual information, which needs to be carefully analyzed. Identified six types of peripheral clues: reciprocation, consistency,、um, social proof, liking, authority, and scarcity. Reciprocation describes a feeling of obligation to believe a message based on a previous experience. Consistency describes when one relies on thoughts and feelings they had in the past. Social proving is very similar to peer pressure. Liking refers to the attractiveness or view that the message source is likable. Authority refers to when a source is viewed as an expert or authority figure that should be trusted and obeyed. And scarcity is when the message is perceived as only being present. Present for a short time and must be accepted quickly. So we learn about the two routes, but what determines、um, whether a person will take the central or the peripheral route to persuasion? Let's put the two routes together to see how motivation and ability to process message force the route selection. Motivation to attempt to messages involvement is the degree of persuasive relevance and personal importance. With product category or brand like a、uh, high or low involvement, the need for cognition, personality trait reflect the extent to which people engage in and enjoy、um, effortful.、Uh, Effort for thinking, also like high or low need for recognition, the ability to attend to message it, messages、um, is freedom from distraction. Distraction disrupts elaboration and concentration must be possible. The second one is whether it is sufficient prior knowledge. Receiver must be able to understand information to be able to elaborate on it. Next, we will talk about disciplines that utilize the theory in some examples. Researchers have applied the theory to many fields, including advertising,、um, marketing, politics, consumer behavior, healthcare, and so forth. Take application in advertising communication, for example. In 1983, Patty、um, Capshaw and Schumann、um, conducted a study to examine. Source effects. It was a product advertisement about a new disposable razor. The authors purposefully made one group of subjects highly involved with the product by telling them the product would be test mark marketed soon in the local area, and by the end of the experiment, they would get. They will be given a chance to get a disposable razor. Whereas the authors made another group of subjects have a low involvement with the product by telling them that the product will be tested, marketed in a distant city, and by the end of the experiment, they will have the chance to get a toothpaste. In addition to varying involvement, the authors also varied source and message characteristics by. 
showing a group of the subjects as featuring popular athletes, whereas showing other subjects as featuring average citizens, showing some subjects as with strong argument and other as with weak arguments. This. Experiment shows that when the elaboration likelihood was slow, featuring among a famous athletes in the advertisement will lead to more favorable product attitudes, regardless of the strength of the product attributes presented. Whereas when elaboration likelihood was high, only the argument strength would manipulate、uh, affected attitudes. Some researchers have been criticized for misinterpreting the theory. One instance、um, is Kurlaski and Thompson thinking that the type of information that affects message persuasion determines the processing of central or peripheral routes. Message variables are only inferential when the central route is used, and information like source variable is only inferential when the peripheral route is used. In fact. The theory does not make statements about types of information being related to routes. Rather, the key to the theory is how any type of information will be used depending on central or peripheral routes. Regardless of what the, that information is, the central route may permit source variables to inference preference for certain language usage in the message. Like beautiful or validate a related product, cosmetic. When wires the peripheral route may only lead individuals to associate the god the goodness of source var variables within the message. Theoretically, all of these could occur simultaneously. Thus, the distinct. A、uh, distinction between central and peripheral route is not the type of information being processed. As those types can be applied to both routes, but rather how that information is processed, and ultimately whether processing information in one way or the other will result in different attitudes.、Um, the second one is that also related to the first is that processing of the central route solely involved thinking about the message content and not thoughts about the issue.、Um, As Patty and Capshaw stated, if the issue is very important to the person, but the person doesn't understand the argument being presented in the message, or if no arguments are actually presented, then elaboration of arguments cannot occur. Nevertheless, the person may still be able to think about the issue. Therefore, issue-relevant thinking is still a part of the central route and is necessary for one to think about the message content. Lastly, a third instance of misinterpretation is the disregard of the quantitative dimension、um, presented by the theory, and more focus on the qualitative dimension. This quantitative dimension is the peripheral route involves low elaboration、uh, persuasion that is quantitatively different from the central route that involves high elaboration. With this difference, the theory also explains that low elaboration persuasion processes are qualitatively different as well. It is seen as an incorrect. The theory focuses on a quantitative explanation over a qualitative one. However, one of the theory key points is that elaboration can range from high to low, which is not incorrect as data from experiment concluded by this. As well suggested, that persuasion findings can be explained by a quantitative dimension without ever needing a qualitative one. Now let's move to the theory into agricultural communication applications. The agricultural angle effect of framing agriculture biologically, a biotechnology message on attitude and intent to publish within the elaboration likelihood models. The effect persuasive communication has on influence media coverage of agriculture science. Example used in this theory for persuasive communication was achieved through the use of positively framed message to discover what impact the message frame had on communicators' attitudes toward argument quality and likelihood to publish the information. Some study pointed out that the potential for agricultural communicators to utilize persuasion communication is to influence 
attitudes toward argument quality, while the likelihood to publish information remains a complex decision-making process.